So I've got the landscape Ooh. fabric all in. I clipped the corners at an angle and folded them to make a square, and I folded the side so it sits down a little bit better. Once there's a little bit of dirt in it, it will sit down more, but you do kind of see this. I'd rather see the landscape fabric than the dirt. Um, speaking of dirt, this is um, ABG. It's called the Atlanta Botanical Gardens mix. Um, it's got sphagnum moss, peat moss, coconut fiber, tree fern fiber, uh, charcoal, a couple other things. It's really good for plants. You can get it at, I think it's any herb, if not New England Herpetological Society is online. It's really decently priced. Black Jungle Terrarium Supply, Josh's Frogs. Um, you can try and make your own. I did my first tank, and it was more hassle than it was worth to buy the big bags and mix it, especially if you're just doing a 10 gallon. You end up with a lot of extra. Just want to get a nice even layer. Again, you're looking for about inch and a half, two inches. I just try and get it to cover that little bit of landscape fabric just so you kind of have a little reference point to go by. So you're not looking at it when you're looking down at it. Next is kind of up to you. Um, a lot of people use leaves. Uh, these are live oak leaves. To make a nice cover. I find it's actually a little bit hard, especially for froglets, to get around in. Um, they are dry, so it can be kind of a puncture hazard if they jump on it wrong. Uh, a lot of people use sphagnum moss, which I'm going to use some of. It's antifungal, so you won't get a lot of gross nasties in it, even if it gets a little too wet like this is. Um, you just soak it first, it comes dry. Sometimes it's called orchid moss. This is what it looks like dry. It holds a lot of water. And some people use live moss. You can buy sheet moss. Josh's Frogs has some really good stuff. Um, I used to breed fish, and I use a lot of what's called Rica in my nice tanks. Mm -hmm. I think Pelia is another one. Two baby tears. They're nice little ground covers, nice and bright green. You have to keep it pretty moist, but the frogs like that anyways. Now this will grow algae on it. You can kind of see little bits of green. I don't really mind. If it, you mind, don't keep it so wet. It doesn't hurt anything. You will get kind of a cycle similar to fish tanks, where you get all sorts of mini microflora popping up. I used to get little mushrooms that popped up. They don't hurt anything, it's just part of the natural cycle. Um, there's life spores sometimes in these. Sometimes you'll get a cool slime mold on the glass. Again, it doesn't hurt anything. Um, springtails are a miniature, I think they're actually kind of a, a crustacean. I think they're classified as an isopod. Uh, they will do cleanup for frog poo and fungus. That's what they eat, and frogs will eat them. So it's good to get some of those. Wood lice are another good small critter to get. Isopods are my favorite. They're really easy to keep. There's some tutorials online of how to actually capture native isopods and um, springtails. <coughs> Just for reference, isopod is kind of like a pill bug or a potato bug. If you've ever seen the ones that roll in on themselves and roly poly, they have all sorts of different kinds of them. The dwarf purples are my favorite because they're nice and small and the frogs will actually eat them. So now we've got a nice little layer of moss. Just kind of pat it down so a frog can't get stuck underneath it so it doesn't come up. And you don't have to cover the dirt. I just find that sometimes frogs get a little bit on themselves and they don't really like being dirty. And they'll go get in their water dish and make it nice and dirty. Looks. 
little forest floor feel. And it's not so dense like this, then you don't really have to worry about them getting stuck underneath them as much. It affords them little hiding places. Um, for water dish, I just used one of these for Petco. I think it was for a leopard gecko or something at one point. Um, I actually do a tiny bit of water and put a tadpole in it when they're about to morph out. That way they can go straight into the tank. got a little stepped area for them to crawl out of so they don't get stuck and so the ones that jump in it don't drown. Got some, it's not philodendron, I can never remember what this is, but if you have a friend that grows some, they should give you some. I grow it so prolifically I just chuck it because it grows so much. Um, I like to plant this at the back of the tank. It will grow up the glass towards the white and cover the back. You can kind of see up here there's some little root marks because it was growing up and trying to grow out. Frogs love this. It grows so well in their environment and they love to hide under the leaves. This piece was in there about two months and it started out about two leaves. It just goes nuts. It will grow with its roots into the water too, which I don't mind because that affords a little bit of a hiding place for the frogs. I've got some jewel orchid. I think this is Macode's Patola. I'm not sure exactly. Got a Josh's Frogs. Grows like crazy in my tanks. Um, really pretty. Takes it to frog abuse well. Sometimes I have to jump on it. Loves the humidity of the tank. It likes quite a bit of light. <laughs> showpiece plant. Just kind of work it down in the soil a bit. Pinch around it so it stands up. It, it will actually start to climb. Mine and my 29 gallon tank is actually going all the way up the side. Sorry. Um, for these guys you want a glass top. I just took a picture frame and another picture frame piece of glass, cut it, and taped it. I have a glass cutter, I used to do stained glass, and then cut this little piece, put a little tab. This lets you keep in a lot of humidity. They do make um, tops that open this way, those are really nice, but it was more expensive than just getting a couple little pieces of glass, and since this is my kind of temporary tank, I don't worry about that. Uh, as far as lighting goes, I bought this little under-the-counter strip light. It's LED. I think it was like 13 bucks. They do make T5s for this, but um, I've had two of them burn out on me. They don't work that great in my opinion just because they keep dying. Uh, this on. This is, so that's how you just feed them. You dump in the fruit flies. thing about frogs is unlike fish you don't have to clean out their tank. I'm just redoing this because I had just sphagnum moss at the bottom. It's starting to get a little bit soggy. Um, other than that, my 29 gallon tank I've had for two years now and all I've ever done is snip the little plants here and there and scrape down the front of the glass because it will grow algae and things. My breeding pair actually love that cover. I do it maybe once a year just because they will stop breeding if they feel too exposed. So they actually like a scuzzy tank, the dirtier the better. Little frogs, I like to be able to see them. So I'm gonna pour a little water. Frogs. 
the seven cobalt froglets. I morphed out oh three to four two some two to four months ago. This guy he's about four months old out of water. This guy in the back he's about two. That's my favorite. He's got really good little wristlets and a bright orange head. And I'm wearing gloves just to protect them from me, not me from them. They aren't poisonous in captivity. Uh, let's see if I can show you the best way to catch a frog without injuring it. So I have a tube here. This is a longer tube. Some people use glass. I found plastic to be easy. You just file down the edges so they're not sharp. You put it over the frog, don't squish any legs or toes, they can get injured and then you might have a dead frog. Um, kind of cover your thumb with one side once they jump in, cover this with the other side, put it in the tank, let go and they'll hop right out. It's quite interesting, they just readily hop right in. forward. Hopefully he'll jump up. Usually stick to the inside of it. There he goes. That's what I mean. Just cover with one side, cover the other. Gives you a chance to get a nice good look at your frog. There's him. He's got some nice bracelets on him, too. I don't know if you can see that. Do be careful with small frogs, they can nose past your thumb. And my big frog, or my breeding female, she's actually kind of a bully. She'll push past my thumb, she's very strong. Um, and gives you a good chance. If they won't get out, just give them a little bit of a nudge. They tend to pop, unless he's nice and cozy in there. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. Don't shake your frogs. I know it kind of goes without saying, but you'd be surprised. Come on, buddy. Sometimes a little dip of water just on the side will kind of loosen up their legs enough. Nice belly shot of him. So I'll go ahead and get all these in here and then I'll start another video.